You see, most anglers flock to the state for ravenous redfish in the saltwater marshes, or if you're a bass angler, you probably might find yourself in a maze of cypress trees, flipping roots for largemouth bass. But we're here for an entirely different goal. Our mission over the next few days is to highlight a far less explored fishing scene that lies right here in some of Louisiana's major urban scapes. Whether we're casting for speckled trout and redfish under the I-11 bridge, or canal hopping for prehistoric river monsters, we will be exploring any unique opportunity that Louisiana has to offer. Let's roll. We've discovered a nice little city pond, not too far from where we got the intro kicked off. I'm bringing two rods with me, one of which is a rat and the other light spinning. This is all uncharted territory for myself. I've never fished Reefport before. I really haven't fished freshwater in Louisiana, period. Usually when I come down here, we're on the coast in Hopedale, Delacroix, Delacroix, I guess some people call it, uh, chasing redfish, but this is completely out of my comfort zone. I'm an urban angler, I like doing this, but this is totally new for me, so I'm excited to explore some, some new fisheries today. What is that? Is it a bass? Oh, oh no, it's a bass. He's just not looking too good. He just ate it. Good one. Good one. Good one. Good bass. Good bass. Come here. Come here. Get him in. Let's go. Let's go, dude. No way. Oh my gosh. The only reason why I can see this fish in the water so clearly is because he had like some scars on his head. First bass of Casting Concrete, Louisiana. And it's not a bad one. We're in a little city park right now, completely public, doing a bit of shallow water fishing. And uh, that is a good start. It's gonna be tough, not only because we haven't fished here before, but because these places generally see a lot of activity. While they don't get fished as much as they probably should, um, they still get fish and these bass are definitely pressured. That is a amazing start to our Shreveport stop here on Louisiana Casting Concrete. Beautiful bass. Back she goes. Come on, old girl, you got this. Awesome. <laughs> Put it there, Caleb. Nice first bass. That was our first bite of the day. A nice two pound largemouth. Just cruising the bank, probably looking for shallow bluegill or any sort of bait. He saw that four inch Guggenlunker log and just could not resist. That is so much fun. Sight fishing, fun. Sight fishing and a tiny pressure urban pond. Multiply that by two. So epic. Let's keep cranking. Hey! What's up? I'm video. Oh, nice, man. That's awesome. What's your name? Charlie. Nice to meet you, Charlie. Have a good one, bro. Thank you. Take care. See ya. Hey, have you gone all the way down there? Uh, yeah, not all all the way down, but like the, the second to last section. Yeah, I catch all my fish all the way down there. Really? Yeah. We might try. I'm going to peep this and then head on down there. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Carp spawning. Oh my gosh. They're going crazy over there. The carp are going crazy. Oh, they are getting feisty. Oh yeah, dude, we need to come back here with bread. Look at that one eating. Yeah, we need to come back here with bread. There's a supermarket down the way. Bread, corn. Let's go get some carp. I'm gonna chump some carp up. There's a couple different ways you can catch carp. You either catch them on the bottom, or some may not know this, but you can actually topwater fish for carp. And topwater fishing is my favorite. I think it was the last episode of the Florida Casting Concrete that we filmed, we managed to actually catch a pretty nice 
grass carp. It was actually one of my favorite moments just because it like was a spot right outside of the holiday and we were staying at. I just am not 100% sure if they're going to be feeding right now. We did see one come up, but I don't know. It's not looking too good. Let's go over maybe a little bit farther down, see if we can get them chummed up. <sighs> just a quick break. All right, we're good. That's a big gar. Oh my God, there he is. Oh, he's looking at my worm. Oh boy, that's a good fish. Oh, he's like under the tree, dude. I see him right there. Might be able to get a shot of him. Oh, he just nipped it. He just nipped it. He's got it. Got him, got him, got him. That was insane, dude. That was insane. Listen to my drag. Come here, oh, come here, come here, come here. Oh, come here. That was insane. Oh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever caught a bass like that. This fish was in one of the most difficult spots I've ever had to catch. And we're going to get a quick look and send him back. I'm pretty sure she was on a bed. We don't want to keep these fish out of the water too long, especially if they're guarding fry or eggs. Such a sick bass though. Wow. Okay. I'm going to put him back and tell you guys how that went down. His bed is right there. I believe So we're just going to send him back. All right, go get him girl. I was over here watching like, a lot of movement under this limb as I was working like a little one pounder on a bed. And uh, I'm like, what is that? Like, are they spawning bluegill or whatever? Sure enough, I looked between the limbs and I saw this like blob, like a pretty good fish. I actually thought he was a little bit bigger than that. Still a solid bass. And he was chasing little minnows and, and bluegill off presumably a bed. And what I did is I just took my little tiny slim shake, which is an, also an awesome sight fishing shallow water worm for this time of year. It has a much slower rate of fall than the lunker log. We just got it wacky wormed, very similar to how we were fishing earlier. And it just kind of fluttered in front of his face. He rushed over toward, towards it, grabbed the whole freaking worm in his mouth and ran off. I set the hook with about literally like that much line, like not even 12 inches, probably 12 inches on the dot. That was a weird fish catch in, in a weird setting too. Like I can't believe how fired up that fish was. It's a pretty good start though. Two, two pounders in an area where you've got busy traffic and quacking Mojave ducks and turtles and trash. It's a nice little pond though. Let's keep crushing and put it there, Caleb. Bing bong. If you're coming to Louisiana, no matter what city you're passing through, you cannot go wrong with Cajun. We're at actually one of my favorite little joints that we've eaten in the past, and they've got pretty good seafood, pretty good Cajun. Some of my favorite food too, like Cajun hands down is my favorite. I love seafood, I love fresh shrimp, caught straight from the Gulf. This is a good starting point. I'm excited to bring you guys along with not only to some of these fishing destinations, but some of these food destinations, because the food in the city really says a lot about what the place is like, and uh, Shreveport's definitely got a good one. Yes, some boudin. We got boudin, spicy crackers, boiled shrimp, half pound, and of course, of course, some gumbo, some gumbo and rice. Kill, what'd you get? You got like, and it's like Cajun seafood, mac and cheese. Everything has been good so far. This is a good start. I think we're gonna get some good food as we progress, but, uh, this is a good foundation for our, the meal side of casting concrete. Got some fish, now time to grub up. Cheers. There he is, there he is, there he is, there he is, there he is. There he is. See him? Here we go. I'm gonna see if I can get him fed up on bread. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, dude. This is going down. This is crazy, dude. We just pulled off on this like little roadside ditch. It looks like a retention pond. There's looks like there's yeah, there's something. There's tons of stuff in here. Looks like there's like two carp or koi. I don't know what they are, but they're feeding. Bass, you think? Hang on. Here we go. Oh my God, these bluegill are being such cock blocks. If only the freaking bluegill were. Oh, here we go. Got him. Got him. Got him. That's so crazy. That is so crazy. I have no idea what this is. It looks like some sort of koi or whatever. What? 
did we just catch? <laughs> that was so dirty. Take a look at this little creature. Oh my God, it's gonna, oh, come here. I got you, I got you. Take a look at that little specimen. I don't know if somebody came in here and decided to drop like goldfish in this retention pond, but we were driving over to grab some, some light action gear for potentially a panfish mission. And Caleb and I spotted this little tiny ditch with bluegill in it. I threw a couple pieces of bread in and then these carp or goldfish, whatever they are, decided to basically emerge. Such an interesting fish. You can literally hear the motorcycles and cars whizzing past us. New species for the Shreveport stop. Get back down there, buddy. Oh, there he goes, just spit up the bread. <laughs> I'm really curious to what that thing is. It doesn't look like a carp. He looks a little golden and it could be a cross breed between the two, a carp and a goldfish. Sometimes it happens in these urban spots, these urban puddles and retention ponds. People have a goldfish, they can't take care of it, so they dump it in public waterways. It's not legal, but it happens and it makes for very unique fishing opportunities where you can just pull over on the side of the road, take a piece of bread that you purchased at a grocery store moments ago and make a cast on a fish that you know most people wouldn't normally even attempt to that was kind of fun on the ultralight stick not a very big fish uh, but we did manage to catch something a little bit different other than a bass today that was so freaking cool there's two more over here i want to see if these guys are they're actually really hard to get to eat they're eating the the bread seamlessly without the hook but with the with the hook on they were acting a little smart this guy's still down there grubbing super hard i wonder if he'll pick it up Oh my gosh. Of course, the, oh, I caught the bluegill. I got a bluegill. <laughs> no way. What the hell is that? Oh, it's a little green sunfish, I believe. Another new species. I wasn't even after him. I threw in front of where that carp was feeding. And this guy ate it. Species number three for Shreveport. That is so dope. I'm just gonna toss him back. There he goes. It's so funny, man. Everything loves bread. Everything. Oh, here we go, Caleb. Ready? Yeah. About to smoke this guy. You just ate two pieces of bread on top. I'm about to light this guy up. Got him. That was so insane. That was so insane. Oh, this one's fighting way harder. This one's fighting way harder. <laughs> This one looks more like a carp. Come here, come here, buddy. Come here. Got really light line. That is so insane that we stumbled upon this random little spot with tiny carp and koi in them. Ooh, he's pissed. He is pissed. What a unique little freaking spot this is. I cannot believe we found something like this. Come here. There he goes. Back in the water. Thank you for playing. Not much of a fight, but. It is interesting being able to like f pitch and flip bread to, to carp and have them literally chase it. I've never seen that kind of behavior in, in carp before. Very weird. Normally when you see stuff like this, you drive right past, you don't even bother fishing it, but seeing as the theme and the mentality that we're, we're trying to keep throughout this whole journey is like fish anything, fish everything. If there's water, explore it, investigate it. Most of the time when we pull up something like this, it's dead, there's nothing. But the water looked clean, there was grass. And when I came down here and threw bread for the bluegill, they were coming up, and that's what got these strange looking hybrid carp to also rise the surface. So we had to take full advantage of it. That was very fun. Well, we took a little pit stop after catching those carp out of that literal puddle to go grab some fly fishing gear. Now, normally I just pack my own fly fishing gear, but all my fly rods are broken because I'm a clumsy idiot and I may have been trying to catch carp or catfish on a fly. Anyway, it's a long time ago. We picked up some gear. We actually met a few of you guys. I ran into like maybe, what was it, killed like six different viewers, all super nice, genuine human beings, gave us some spots and some locations. We're actually back at where we started. Try to make things a little bit interesting here picked up a little three weight and we're gonna see if we can catch some bluegill, maybe even a bass on the fly rod. This whole trip is about being diverse, not just focusing on bass. I know that's where my heart lies, but like we're gonna stop off and fish, you know, saltwater canals or anything that looks good. We're going to pull the truck over, put the hazards on and check it out. That's what casting concrete is truly all about. Yeah, it might be some places. Oh, there we go. Got one. 
got one finally what is this oh a crappie no way <laughs> a new species to add to the list not the intended target i was hoping to come down here and catch some little bluegill and we caught ourselves a micro little black crappie on the fly that actually might be my first ever crappie on the fly you can hear the swing sets behind us right now we are in it that is so crazy didn't even think there'd be crappie in here nice gentle release for a little crappie buddy very unexpected surprise there he goes <laughs> that's awesome never knew never knew on the freaking fly too that's so funny I wonder if there's some big ones in here when we were here in the morning the bank was littered full of bluegill some were spawning some were eating now they're back over here i'm not seeing much anything seeing a lot of little bluegill but they're too small to even take the smallest fly i have i was thinking too we could maybe get a gar as well and the gar have peeled off really not seeing much of anything we got a long drive ahead of us too a 200 mile drive after this so we can't spend too too much time here We are back on the road headed towards Baton Rouge right now. I decided to take the back roads. And all along this route we're taking are miles and miles of what I originally thought were ponds, but after a further inspection, these are crawfish farms. This is crazy to think that the crawfish that we get at restaurants all throughout the United States probably come from these little tiny square man-made ditches full of water. To think that there's probably hundreds of thousands of tasty craws just chilling and these waterways is nuts. We uh, cut our Shreveport trip short, had to hit the road. We had a three hour drive to Baton Rouge. We're still an hour away. It was sad to leave Shreveport. I actually had a pretty large misunderstanding for that place. The fishing was pretty good. Love to come back to Shreveport, but we're still on the roll. We've got, we've got literally four days to fish three major cities. And it was an experience to say the least. But I figured we take a moment, a nice breather, pull off to the side of the road, throw the hazards on, and just gander at just this gloriousness of probably one of the tastiest crustaceans out there. Little tiny lobsters, man. Louisiana backcountry is just, is so cool. I'm glad we took this route. Well, we've made it to our next destination. We are in a brand new city. I don't know if I mentioned it prior, but if if I didn't, we'll keep it a secret as to where we are at right now. This is uh, hopefully going to be a little bit more of a fishier stop as we pulled in through here, looking on Google Maps and just seeing what's around. There's definitely more water. We're not quite at the coast yet, so saltwater is not a factor for tomorrow's urban Louisiana fishing session. But we've got some ponds, some bayous, some canals, some creeks within a stone's throw of where we're staying. By the way, not that it's related to the video, but uh, this is a super nice room. Like, we are staying in a beautiful room. This room costs as much as our room in Shreveport, Louisiana, for whatever reason. Like, a $150 room doesn't go that far in Shreveport, but here, where we're at, in my opinion, a little bit better destination, it goes quite a ways. But, yeah, we're going to get some rest. It's 10. We just got off the road, drove a cool almost four hours to get here. Although I'm absolutely exhausted, I am anxious to get after tomorrow, just observing some of the adjacent little waterways, urban little fisheries that are surrounding our, our hotel. I think I think tomorrow's episode is going to be hopefully a little bit more dynamic and nuclear. Not to say today wasn't, but we really only had a half day to fish and we were kind of limited as to what we could potentially target. I mean, it was mostly bass, gar, bluegill that catch a crappie, which is pretty wild. But I think down here where we're at in this city, we'll be able to expand our horizon as to what we chase after. But I'm bidding for all, to all you beautiful wieners out there. Uh, we're going to get some good night's rest and get ready for tomorrow's urban fishing session, bright and breezy in the morning. We'll see you then. I don't quite like that uh, free hotel breakfast in the morning to get things going. Powdered eggs, stale sausage. I was concerned this place in Louisiana didn't have hot sauce. But it seems we're on brand this morning. It's my, actually my favorite hot sauce, Louisiana Crystal. So good. People like Tallulah, yeah, it's okay. People like Tabasco, I don't know why. But Louisiana Crystal over some eggs and sausage. Money. You know, I was thinking about this late last night when we pulled into this new destination here in uh, basically South Louisiana. I was thinking to myself, like, why do I like doing this so much? Why do I like going to these cities and fishing? Like, I've got the opportunity to go just about all over the world and wet a line. But 
for whatever reason, we, we keep this casting concrete kind of a series on this channel. And I think one of the main reasons why is this is where my, where my beginning started. Like every day after school, hop on my bike, grab my rod, head down to the three little ponds that were in my residential area in suburban Illinois, and I'd fish my guts out. I'd fish till dark. Sometimes I might have fibbed to my parents and said that I was done with my homework just so I could get out in the water and try to catch a fish. And most days I wouldn't get anything but a bite, but it was the experience. It was like just the idea of going and fishing these little tiny ponds that were encompassed in townhomes and small houses and just pulling fish out. My bass boat was my five-speed bike and the free time that I had was only a few hours that I could spend uh, on, a, on an afternoon after school. So I think that's why I like doing this so much and that's why I'm so excited about today is because where we are at is very much rich in water. This is great. We're bringing two rods today. I got a spinning and I got a casting. The casting has got the old rat. I am dedicated to catch a fish on a rat or a mouse in the urban setting. What also is beautiful about this too is we get to leave the truck and trailer right at the hotel and walk over to where we'll be fishing today. Baton Rouge is a place that, kind of like Shreveport, I'm driving through. I'm not stopping to fish here, but around here it seems like there's a good amount of water. There's two giant lakes amongst bayous and a couple creeks and some tiny ponds and we're hoping to explore all of it. Oh yeah, what's that over there? Nervous water. For whatever reason, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these like, Louisiana cities have like these things called bayou. I don't know if it's a southern thing, but like I would call this a creek back home, but down here in Louisiana, it's a bayou. So we're fishing this little bayou right now to get started. There's some good shade in here and I think this would be a perfect opportunity if there is bass in here to get a nice bite on the rat. But I just got throttled. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, bass. Bass is eating little tiny bait way up shallow. They just, they just drop it. There we go. Oh, it just came off. <laughs> that was so sick. First bite of the day. I think things a little bit more interesting. I'm seeing a lot of tiny bait fish right, right up against the bank. And with that, I'm gonna throw something that imitates said bait fish or a little tiny bull shad. Something a little more aggressive to get them fired up and anxious. A lot of movement over here. Ooh, something big just spooked off the bank. Yeah, it's pretty cool, I guess. True. Yeah, the convenience thing would be pretty nuts. Oh! My frog's still there. What was that? Gar. It looked like it was way more aggressive than a gar. Yeah, it's a gar. I've seen something under it. Oh, yeah. Damn, I just got broken off. There's my frog. Dude, gar just, they can mutilate braid. So that's 65 pound braid that gar just snapped like butter. It's probably like a 66 pound gar, probably. Yeah, it had to have been a 66 pound gar. Now I gotta get my frog back. Thankfully, he let go of it. I don't know how I'm gonna get that frog because it's like. No, but I like you get it. Good thing it broke off. Yeah. Because if you didn't, it would have smoked the truck behind you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I heard the truck behind me. I'm like, I heard the. No, didn't want to turn around. I was like, no. Nope. Well, if you want a game used filthy frog, it's here on Campus Lake. Shout out to that gar for snapping me off. I can't, like, get the frog back to because it's not like a troubled bait, like a spook that floats. I can't, like, snag it with my line. So. That's just gonna be there for eternity. It's, I'm just literally watching it float right in front of me. Man, picking up shop, very deceiving. I, I started off this morning with high hopes just due to the concentration of water on here. Like everywhere you look, there's little tiny nooks and crannies where there should be bass and you fish two ponds in a bayou with no luck. So we're gonna see if we can bring the fight to them. I'm hopping on the boat, hopefully. There's a boat ramp actually what looks like a boat ramp down here at one of the bigger lakes that's on campus here at LSU. I'm thinking that maybe we'll be able to drop the boat in and see if we can get some fish from the boat. We've, but we've done like hardly any boat fishing this trip. And I think now's the time to actually hop on the water, see if we can make it happen. Well, the good news is we're on the water. The bad news, there's not that much of it. I think I failed to mention this at the beginning of today's video, but we are smack dab in the middle of LSU's campus. Go Tigers. I noticed that everything that we fished today, that is two ponds and a couple of creeks, there hasn't been that much life. 
swimming around. And that's one of the reasons why we've dropped a boat in and a lake that you can actually fish from a boat on campus. Unfortunately, it's the whole lake, it seems like it's one foot. It's very deceiving too, because I saw this pond. I'm like, oh, well, if we get the boat on here, we could definitely get some, get some fish for sure. Like being on a boat obviously is an advantage in some sorts, but this whole lake, I mean, it's not even a pond, it's a lake. It's like a foot deep. I can't even use my big motor right now. If the, oh my God, what the something. What the f is that? It's like a concrete wall right in front of us. Dude, this is weird. I'm so glad I'm looking down right now because I would literally just rip my trail motor straight off. Oh, yep, that's it right there. <sighs> Concrete. Thank God for live scope because out in the middle of this lake, check this out, this is crazy. So right here, you've just got straight mud. It's like two feet of water. But then you go like an inch further. Did you hear that? That is like a piece of concrete, like a concrete pipe. That would have ripped my, ripped my skeg off, it would have ripped my troll motor off. I noticed it on the graph, I was like, well, we're not getting over that. Oh, man, rough start to urban fishing in Baton Rouge, man. Look at that, you can see on the graph, it's just like a wall. That will, <laughs> that's a day ender right there. Well, we're gonna get out of this, this absolute mud hole, and that is, that says a lot coming from a guy who's been fishing mud holes. This is a mud hole. We're gonna get out of here, see if we can maybe launch in that other lake. That other lake looks cleaner, it's got grass. And from a general standpoint, that's kind of speaking to me from like a bass angler standpoint. Are we rolling? Do we have to be? Just kidding. I gotta keep a positive mental attitude. Positive, the urban fishing is not supposed to be easy, clearly. I'm also not the best thing. So, now it's time to put it in, uh, in, in third gear and just disappear, just <laughs> I know I promised that we're gonna keep it Cajun throughout this whole trip, wherever we eat, but there's a, a special fast food joint that's probably one of my favorite, that is home here in Baton Rouge. That is Raising Cane's. Also, fun fact, Raising Cane is named after a Labrador retriever. The owner, when they first built this place, had a lab and its name was Raising Cane and it would hang around the shop when it was getting constructed. So while it's not necessarily on par with Cajun in Southern Louisiana cuisine, we have to stop off of the OG in Baton Rouge and get ourselves some, uh, some chicken fingies. guy oh my gosh that took a long time come here bud <laughs> to say it's been a grind is an understatement it's 5 p.m. we've jumped around to so many different little puddles and urban honey holes and this is our first fish of the day a little dinky Louisiana largemouth Caleb shaking his head as am I it's tough man because it's like we're not only out here fishing see you later bud it's difficult because we're not only how you're fishing, but we're filming for you guys and we want to make it as interesting as we possibly can. Now, it's not all about catching, it's all about the experience, uh, but it would be nice to prove to you guys and show you why we're here, and that is for the fishing, for the culture, for the food. And we've done everything but the fishing part, the catching part, I should say. So, first fish, we still have like maybe two and a half hours of daylight left, so we're not giving up. There could be just a, a huge bright light at the end of the tunnel. But it's been very difficult. Baton Rouge has kicked our ass. A little bit deeper over here. This looks really crazy. Oh, I just got hit. Little guy. It is a fish though. It is a fish. Let's go. <laughs> Louisiana sun is setting on us. We're still trying our best to make it happen. Fish number two of the day on a little lunker log. This is a cool little lake. It's, it seems like it'd be very natural and it's kind of quiet over here, but it's really, really not that far from I-10 where we have been traveling most of this trip. Just a little squeaky fish, but much, 
much appreciated on a tough day like today. And now to send little buddy back. See you, dude. Thank you for thank you for participating. I appreciate that. I'm looking at the bottom right now, and I can see pretty much like four feet down. It's really clean water, and there's a lot of old beds. I imagine these fish are pretty far into post spawn, but that usually means they're pretty aggressive and hungry. Imagine we'll find a couple more. It, feels, it just feels good to get fit, wieners. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, a whole school of them. There we go, another little guy. <laughs> oh, he just spit it. Dude, there's a whole school of them following the worm in. That was nuts. Yeah, there's one. Little. They must be so freaking little. Well, that was a little bit better. A little bit better, maybe. Oh, he's got me in the grass. There he goes. No, <laughs> a little largemouth. This is hilarious, dude. This is hilarious. I'm legitimately getting bit every single cast. There's a lot of fish in here, but I think they're just really tiny. Dinky squad. Hey, man, I'll freaking take it on a day like today. Whew. It's been nothing short of a challenge. They're itty, bro. They're all so itty in here. <laughs> oh, at least we're catching up on some numbers. I wonder if they just stocked this place or I don't know. Maybe they're just really stunted. They're really pretty though. Like beautiful, perfect fish. Wow. So cool. See ya. They for sure spawn though. I mean, they're they're definitely old enough to and big enough to spawn. Or at least some of them are because I'm seeing a bunch of empty beds. Couple. Couple. Uh, just little worms. How about yourself? You getting any? Yeah, I got about 15, 16. Nice, man. Any size? No. Just little. I saw really in here, some little ones. Tiny, yeah. There must not be too many fishing options around here if this guy's been fishing here since he was seven and he knows it's like full of things. Oh, oh. There we go. Dude, that is so much fun. Oh, it's a little bit better. <laughs> it is a little bit better. On the four inch lunker log. That is so sick, dude. Oh, I'm such a happy per Dude, I'm such a happy angler right now. Finally got on some fish, dude. Finally, finally. This is definitely the most we've caught in both days compared. It's definitely it's obviously been not the easiest, but at least we're catching some fish, dude. Look at that green little Louisiana bass. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Let's go. Look how clean that water is, my gosh.